Hiya peeps. Well, this video is a look into the captains of the various Enterprise ships of Starfleet, starting from the Excelsior class Enterprise B to the E. Now if you're looking for the original series vessels and earlier you can check out part 1 of this vid linked here and in the description below. And another thing, this video contains a lot more speculation and theorising based on memory beta content and I'll mention it as such, but this is the reason for it being a separate video as the Constitution ship's captains, apart from some vagueness here and there, are quite well mapped out. So on with the rundown. As mentioned last video, the Enterprise A was in essence a 40 plus year old vessel given a new lick of paint and renamed the Enterprise. As such, plans were already in motion to resume the legacy of the vessel with Starfleet's latest technology and pride and joy, the Excelsior class. The ship was assigned to Captain John Harriman in 2293 and for its shakedown run, crew from the USS Enterprise including Admiral Kirk were in attendance. This was Harriman's first command at the age of 34. It's said that he reached such a prestigious position because of the influence of his father, the then Commander-in-Chief of Starfleet. Whether true or not, Harriman was indeed relatively inexperienced but at least understood that, offsetting his lack of experience with a more open forum style of command that encouraged questions and discussion until a decision had been made. The ship's launch was marred by a tragedy, however, when they responded to distress calls from Elorian refugees caught in the Nexus Energy Ribbon. The rescue attempt seemingly resulted in the loss of Captain Kirk, and the superstitious would go on to say this was an ill omen for the ship. Harriman had a lot to prove, that he deserved his spot on the bridge, that he hadn't just been handed it by his father, and had to outgrow the idea that the Enterprise B was to be remembered as the ship that got Kirk killed. He also undertook missions assigned by Starfleet Intelligence, routinely involving the Romulan Empire, and eventually relinquished command in 2311 after 18 years. He would continue his career in Starfleet, stepping away from the Starfleet Intelligence, as the Tomad incident had left a bitter taste in his mouth. He was made the liaison to the Corps of Engineers until 2375. The Enterprise would then pass into the hands of Demora Sulu, who had served on the ship for most of her career until reaching the rank of captain. She remained in command, stepping away once in 2315 for a few months, until the early 2320s when command finally passed to Captain Thomas Johnson Jr, whom served as captain until the ship's disappearance in 2329 after an unknown infection spread throughout the crew. No wreckage was found nor a complete record of events. Eventually the search would be called off and the ship and crew presumed killed in action. Three years later in 2332, Utopia Planitia oversaw the construction of the new Ambassador class USS Enterprise NCC-1701C. Captain Rachel Garrett was the commanding officer of the vessel and like Harriman before her, it was her first command. The most notable thing about the Enterprise C was at its final mission in 2344, where it responded to a distress call from Narendra III, a Klingon outpost. Once there, it discovered four Romulan warbirds attacking the colony and intervened, buying the Klingons enough time to escape. During the fight, Garrett was killed along with the majority of the senior staff and in its final minutes Lieutenant Junior Grade Richard Castillo took command. The few survivors were brought back as slaves to the Romulus and there are records that a temporal event was involved with the discovery of Natasha Yar's daughter. What is certain is that the sacrifice of the Enterprise C strengthened the weakening relations between the Klingons and the Federation, ensuring that the peace established at Kitama would endure, the second time an Enterprise would enable peace between the two powers. It wouldn't be for another 19 years that another Enterprise was launched. This vessel was the Galaxy class NCC-1701D. Captain Thomas Holloway oversaw the construction of the vessel and was penciled as its first CO until he walked away from the position. Starfleet then turned to the experienced Captain Jean-Luc Picard, who even turned down a promotion in order to remain as the ship's captain. Picard would go on to serve as the captain of the vessel for its entire tenure, except in 2367 when Riker took command to combat the Borg incursions into Federation space 
and again in 2369, when Picard was assigned a top secret mission into Cardassian territory, and Captain Jellicoe was assigned for diplomatic negotiations with the potential aggressors. Picard served with distinction and was able to hand pick most of his senior staff from his many years as a captain. It underwent a minor refit in 2371, however, despite the Enterprise being the centre of the Next Generation show, it was one of the shortest lived vessels to bear the name. Eventually it was destroyed over Viridian III by the Duras sisters with the help of Dr. Tolian Soren. The crew survived the encounter with minimal casualties, but the ship's drive section was destroyed and the saucer unsalvageable. Most of the crew would do their best to stick together and only two years later the Sovereign class USS Enterprise 1701E was launched with the majority of the staff in the same positions, with Captain Picard still in command. The vessel was launched from San Francisco Fleet Yards, the same as the original Enterprise, and assigned minor tasks for several years, likely due in part to the mostly untested Sovereign design. This can be backed up by the vessel and its sister ships being reserved for peacekeeping and diplomatic missions during the Dominion War. The ship received upgrades and maintenance in 2378 and was eventually dispatched to Romulus in 2379 at the request of Praetor Shinzon. The ship endured major structural damage during the encounter but was still functional. This is where the story ends for now but I thought I'd include some more content to flush out a potential future for the ship based on the extensive books and other media surrounding the vessels. Picard would remain in command of the vessel for a total of 12 years, retiring from Starfleet in 2385, becoming the Federation's Vulcan ambassador and resuming the reunification work initiated by Ambassador Spock. The ship then spent a long time in dry dock, undergoing extensive refits to keep up with advancing technologies. Meanwhile, Data had effectively been resurrected when his memories were restored in full in the body of the prototype B4. After several years he returned to active duty and was assigned command of the Enterprise E in 2387, which makes sense, after all he was the second officer and Riker was in command of the USS Titan and Picard had retired. This future is the one described in Star Trek Online and also hinted at in the technically prime universe Star Trek 2009 prequel story Countdown, where we see Captain Data in command, in a uniform very reminiscent of the Star Trek Online attire. The vessel was potentially decommissioned in 2409, leaving Data in command for a whopping 22 years, making him potentially the longest serving captain of a Starship Enterprise. And there we go. This History of the Enterprise Captains technically ends with Nemesis, and the announced Picard series could rewrite anything beyond 2379, but I thought I'd include it anyway as a sort of current farewell to the lineage, after all I can't stand loose ends. After the E we technically have the F, but that's getting further and further from canon with time, so I'll leave it there. As it stands, the longest confirmed serving captain on Enterprise according to just the shows and movies is Christopher Pike at 15 years, with almost everyone else not even having exact start dates. But what about the longest uninterrupted captain, if we include changing ships as an interruption? Well, according to the list that I've worked out, and with admittedly some assumptions, it's Data, if you want to include the extensive memory beta then John Harriman, Pike at number 3, then Rachel Garrett tied with Picard's Enterprise E tenure, then Kirk based on the motion picture, and the assumed second five year mission, but he could be as high as number 2 on this list if we assume he was in command at every unmentioned opportunity that the canon leaves open. Then Archer with a confirmed 10 years, Demora Sulu at 9 shared with the unknown Captain Johnson Jr, Spock takes 8th place with 7 years, but maybe 13 depending on Kirk. Phew. Then Picard with the next generation, Kirk again with his tenure aboard the Enterprise A, Picard again in 11th place with a confirmed 6 years on the Enterprise E, but potentially 12 if he retires in 2385. 
Near the bottom of the list is Robert April with his only one five-year mission, and at the last is Decker with his unfortunate two and a half years. Oh, Decker. As forgettable as the uniform you wore. Still, you can see why this is hardly a definitive list, as most of these dates are based on speculation, books and media outside of the show's primary canon. But you know what? I had fun putting it all together and I hope you did too watching it. Thanks for watching and being part of the channel's growth. I'll see you next time, but before I go, a question. Shall I do a list on the many alternate Enterprises? And if you could see a series at any point in the Enterprises history not already covered, where would you focus it? I'd like to see more on the voyages of the Enterprise B, because the Excelsior is my favourite class, the movie uniforms my favourite uniforms, and I like the idea of a captain who's trying to forge his own story, not just be the son of the Admiral or the one that got Kirk killed, even though he didn't really because Kirk wasn't actually dead but in a make-believe fairy tale land of happy horse riding and omelettes. I'll see you later. I've been Rick. Thanks again and goodbye.